Good afternoon. This is Luke Odell with the National Association for Gun Rights. I'm here with Rory Edwards, and we're talking about the venerable M1 Garand rifle. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of this rifle, Rory? You bet. The M1 Garand was developed in the 1930s by John C. Garand, who was a machine and tool expert at the time. Uh, developed the main, what would become the main battle rifle of World War II. It's a 30 6 rifle, range out to about 800 yards. Um, very powerful firearm, but it was the mainstay of the U.S. forces during World War II. This carried us through the war, it was seen in every battle there. How many of these rifles were made here in the United States and by what companies? Uh, nearly six million were made from four manufacturers. Springfield Armory, Winchester Repeating Arms, Harrington Richardson Arms, and International Harvester Corporation. Those are tractor, that's a tractor company, right? They call those the tractor guns, yes. Uh, it does fire an eight round clip. It has eight bullets in it when they, when they fired them in battle. General Patton, he spoke very highly of these rifles, did he not? He did. General Patton said that the M1 Garand was the finest battle implement ever devised for man. That's pretty impressive. Now, now, do civilians own this this rifle now? Actually, they civilians have had the battle rifles of World War II for a number of years. 1970s, they were on the racks in, in dime stores. You could buy them then at a very, very reasonable price. Uh, today, these rifles are sold through the Civilian Marksmanship Program, or the CMP. That CMP used to be a government-run organization called the Directorate of Civilian Marksmanship. And now, uh, qualified members can buy these firearms through the CMP. The same gun, uh, as far as the design and capabilities of it, is made by Springfield Armory. And they sell this gun uh, newly manufactured. So you can buy a brand new M1 Garand manufactured a month or two ago, or you can buy one from the CMP um, that is basically given to the CMP as a donation from the U.S. Army. Now these rifles have been in production since the 19, late 1930s. Um, where do most of these used uh, CMP rifles come from? Most of the used CMP rifles are coming back from returns. After the war, the United States government did send a lot of rifles overseas to our European allies and our European friends. Uh, these friends now, after 50-some years, are sending them back out of their inventory rolls, going back on U.S. Army inventory rolls and, and donated to the CMP from the U.S. Army. So uh, they were made here um, almost 70-some years ago and are now coming back. That's really remarkable. These guns were made here in America. Uh, they were used during the uh, World War II and in the Korean War. Uh, the U.S. government then uh, lent them out for use by uh, foreign militaries, and now they're coming back into to the United States for collectors like you and me to, to possess them. Now, these rifles really truly were an innovation uh, for their time. You want to talk about a, a few of the unique um, differences between this rifle um, used in World War II and the German rifle or the British rifles of the time. Sure, the, the uh, K98s are what the Germans used as well as the Japanese rifles were bolt action rifles. This rifle is a semi-automatic rifle that uh, does load uh, an eight round in block clip into the top of the rifle rather than on the bottom of it, like where magazines are loaded today on, on modern semi-automatic firearms. This uh, was the clip that they're talking about and where the term originated that really loaded in the top here with, with the bullets in it. Um, the magazines today, by contrast, that are readily available and for sale, carry 20, 30 rounds. And yet, there seems to be an issue with this little eight round guy from World War II going in. Now there are some other um, interesting things that, you could, that they did with this rifle as well. They had a grenade launcher, I believe, and they had sniper versions. Could you tell us a little bit about those? They did. They had two sniper versions. One, one was the M1C sniper. The other was the M1D sniper rifle. The M1C was a World War II version, and post-war, or after World War II, was the M1D. The grenade launchers, um, you actually had a grenade sight base that would show up on the left side of the stock of the rifle. You would actually use the M1 gr uh, grenade sight uh, by adjusting degrees for the distance that you wanted to shoot through a peep sight and a post uh, on the front of that. Yeah, they shot grenades with these. They made sniper rifles out of these. They, uh, they found a lot of uses to, to help uh, America to where it is today. As you heard from M1 Garand collector and expert Rory Edwards, the M1 Garand is one of the great American rifles of all time. Its name is entwined with American firearms culture throughout the 20th century. After using the M1 Garand to defeat Hitler's Nazis, Imperial Japan, and Communist North Korea, Americans maintain their appreciations for the M1 Garand and continue to use it for hunting, collecting, and sport competitions today. 
Even though this rifle originally went into production in the late 1930s, it is still manufactured new today to support the continued demand for this iconic rifle. As Roy Edwards mentioned, it has been common practice since the end of World War II to re-import these rifles from the foreign allies they were lent to after the war. These several decade old rifles are then sold to private collectors and shooting enthusiasts across America. Recently, Barack Obama banned the reimportation of nearly one million guns from this era from South Korea. While the radical anti-gun crowd is giddy with praise for Obama's latest backdoor gun ban, law-abiding U.S. citizens across the United States are crying foul. The Obama administration's State Department has said that the high magazine capacity of these firearms make them a dangerous safety concern and that they must be banned to protect us from terrorism. These outrageous claims are not only incorrect, but they are a thinly veiled attempt to distract from Obama's special interest payback to the radical anti-gun crowd. This desperate pandering must not be allowed to continue. At no time in U.S. history has the ownership of any part of this gun been restricted. These firearms rightly belong in the hands of U.S. citizens, and Obama has banned nearly one million of them without cause. Please do not delay in signing the petition to President Barack Obama. The outrageous banning of an iconic American firearm under trumped-up pretenses cannot be ignored. Sign the petition and help put an end to Barack's ban of World War II rifles. Thank you.